Hey guys, Tiki Domain, Debu.com with a Debu.com forecast update. This forecast update effective around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday, September 23rd, 2017. And uh, okay, we've picked up a ton of new followers uh, since going back to Irma on our social feed. So for first time listeners, we are primarily a surf and marine forecast entity, but we like to tell people you don't have to be a surfer or a mariner to follow our forecast because during hurricane season, we are a tropical weather expert. Now, the season, we're inside of about 60 days to end the season, so if you're not a surfer or a mariner, chances are we are going to lose you at the end of the season uh, because then we're going to go back into uh, winter season and and that's the time where we can get hurricane force lows up in the North Atlantic that can produce large swells or create large swell events. So, first of all, thank you for following. I appreciate that. And um, we're getting ready to move into October. And October, we'll show you climatology here in just a few moments. Wanted to start you off with... The progress of the average Atlantic tropical cyclone season from 1966 to 2009, and this is the date upon which the following number of events would normally have occurred. And if we look down at the chart uh, at the number 8 there, September 24th, which is tomorrow, on average we have 8 named systems. Currently we are at 13, and there can be no question now that uh, NOAA's updated forecast of uh, 30, 45 days ago on an active season has now verified with the chances coming up in the first week of October with tropical cyclone genesis coming out of the Western Caribbean, maybe into the Gulf of Mexico or along the Mid-Atlantic. When we start the season off and we start to look at tracks, this is going back into June. So uh, long-time followers know that we are, one of our favorite sayings is, as it was in the beginning, as it shall be in the end. Uh, this is how the season starts, typically with development out of the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And there's a natural tendency uh, throughout the season for curvature of up and to the right. And when we get into July, we start to expand out where possibilities of development start here in the Eastern Caribbean. And so for followers who have seen us point out the 65 line, well, here's the 65 line. So what happens here is tropical waves begin to start to emerge or areas of low pressure here as they traverse the main development region and get into this region. It increases the chances of something trying to spin up. And then when we get into August... And give me a second here, and you guys bear with me today, again, as usual, as I zoom in and zoom out. Uh, followers this year, uh, long-time followers know as well that um, uh, that started following us at the beginning of the season, that when we got into August, we like to call August the bunny month. And that's because the track and the map looks like a bunny. And this is when the season starts to ramp up towards the peak of season. Peak of season is September 10th. Uh, statistically, uh, for the peak of the season, and we also get into Cape Verde season. And so now our attention as the season progresses starts here, moves here, and then we start to look off towards Africa. And then when we get into September, the peak of the month, here are the typical tracks, again, with that uh, natural curve of up and to the right up and to the right. And what sticks out here this year for this season, uh, if you followed our forecast along with Irma, you know, we talked about how Irma was going to be unconventional or go against unconventional wisdom or thinking. And, you know, Irma came up the West Florida coast, if you will, the center of the state. But what's important to remember about Irma is that once she came up here, she went this way. Remember? Okay, so there has been... So far this season, in our opinion, adjustments to the, we've seen adjustments to the west-southwest. I can't remember the name of the storm, but with Irma, we saw adjustments to the west. And it seems or appears that this is a season of western, westerly trends. 
Now, when we get into uh, October, uh, for those who have been recently following, we've been talking about uh, two types of patterns that develop uh, at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season. So again, if we go back and look at the beginning of the season, up in here towards June, again, development, Western Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and then we get back in here towards the end of the season in October, uh, Western Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and again, that lift of up and to the right. Now, if we start to think about uh, Maria, um, Here's the latest look at Maria, and here's some outcomes that could take place with Maria. Now, we, we can now clearly see, for those of you who follow us on Twitter, again, guys, on Facebook and Instagram, we don't necessarily share all of it uh, to all of our social feeds. Uh, Twitter is where we post everything. Uh, in, in case you didn't see it, we talked about a trough east of Florida. Most of you know that um, probably four or five days ago, we started off pointing out a white little dot right on here uh, on the east Florida coast. That turns out to be the beginning development of this low pressure trough that developed across Florida. There, in fact, was an area of low pressure that the uh, uh, National Hurricane Center had analyzed in here about four or five days ago, and then the trough in here is like this. So the flow is like this. We have an upper level low that's in here, and we were wondering what the effects were going to be off this trough that blew up yesterday. Uh, most of you saw that deep convection, and it appears now that uh, Maria's northeast flow now is starting to get into it at the surface and is drawing it either closer or Maria could end up being drawn closer. If we look at the National Hurricane Center's forecast map, basically shows a north lift in here. And as we pointed out in our last video update, the margin of error at the five-day mark of the five-day cone is up to 211 nautical miles. That could be 211 nautical miles to the right, or it could be 211 nautical miles to the left, or it could just run this straight track, but if the system becomes larger than anticipated, then just like we talked about with Jose, the effects going inland could be more than what's anticipated. Again, if we get 40, 45 knot winds over a little bit more of land, obviously people are going to start to lose power. The other factor is the marine conditions. Large seas, dangerous surf. Surfers, we're going to get into the wind forecast here at the end of the video. And so let's go back to the satellite imagery. Now, here's X Jose. Although Jose is post-tropical now, it's still an area of low pressure. And, you know, we've talked about how the systems always want to go to the tail end of the trough of the system or to a tail end of a front. And we always watch tail ends of fronts along stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop. With this upper level low feature that's in here like this, this is also, let me point this out too, because here's the front that the models have been suggesting that's going to kick Maria out to sea. The problem is, is this upper level low feature, and this upper level low goes all the way down in here to the Gulf of Mexico, so the flow is like this, guys. Counterclockwise like this. This is why we're getting some lift out of Maria to the north because of this flow right here. It's kicking her north. High pressure's got it on the other side, but it's sandwiched in between. The problem is this. If this retrogrades back this way, it's possible that that could also draw Maria in closer to the coast. It appears that this trough that developed east of Florida is having that type of effect. When we look at, let me zoom in on here. Most of you know that we always kind of point things out that look like circular in shape, and we put a little O in parentheses. Give me a second. Let me adjust this over here. And you can kind of see that in here. And this is part of that trough. That trough is being drawn in here like this. And then here's the, the, the far, I guess, uh, western or northwest portion of that trough, if Maria's moving up straight to the north here and this begins to wrap into it, it could broaden that wind field here. Now, just like we showed you with Gale in our last video, 
and uh, it was uh, Irma, and we told you that Jose was torn between two lovers. Remember that? Okay, so right now it appears that Maria is now torn between gravitating towards Jose out to sea, okay, Jose drawing her out to sea, or this upper level low trying to draw her in to the coast. Now, the other factor is, is what happens if the front breaks down because once it hits this upper level low in here, it splits the front. That means that front is not going to be able to pick Maria up and take her out to sea. If you saw yesterday's 12Z Euro and the GFS, it's just weird how the models are acting right now. Yesterday, the Euro pulled her straight up and made a hard right-hand turn. There for a minute in the run while I was watching it live, I said, Ooh, the model's fixing to throw it in for a loop-de-loop. -loop. Again, going against conventional wisdom, and we just already saw Jose do that loop-de-loop. -loop. But that's not what happened. That's not what occurred. All I'm saying is, is that within inside five days, folks living along the outer banks in the mid-Atlantic, you've got a hurricane that's coming up. And the problem is, is that slow-moving tropical depressions or slow-moving tropical storms can have as much devastating effect or financial loss as a fast-moving hurricane. Now think about this. The National Hurricane Center's five-day cone. We're going to be talking about Maria for five more days. And so this is slow-moving. A few days ago, I had pointed out that when it was going to be leaving the Bahamas, how the, the, the letters here marking the category were close together, and then they started to spread out as it got east of Florida. Well, guess what? Look at the letters, how tight and compact they are. This is going to be around for a while. And there are so many variables at the moment that folks living along the mid-Atlantic and the outer banks that old saying is getting ready to come back into play, especially coastal residents. It's better to have it than not need it, than need it, not have it. Okay, we're going to be tracking this over the next three to four days. We're going to find out what the solutions are. We'll see what the afternoon model runs suggest. But I think based on the trends that we're seeing, I think we're going to see that cone later on this afternoon shift a little bit more to the west. Here's the latest marine conditions with Maria. Max seas right now are at 45 feet. Large surf and dangerous marine conditions moving up towards the mid-Atlantic over the next three to five days. Latest 24-hour uh, wind wave forecast out of the Ocean Prediction Center maintaining seas at excess 40 feet. All the way through here, guys, up coming up towards the outer bank. Surfers, be on alert. Here's the latest look at the wind forecast, guys. Sorry, I'm getting off track. This is current. Here's Maria right here. Here's Jose here. Strong northerly fetch into here, pushing into northeast fetch here. With this coming over the top like this, swell should start to fill in. It's going to be on shore, but here come the offshore winds, Florida surfers. For those of you who have not signed up for the Salt Life Food Shacks, Florida Big Wave Challenge, now's your chance at possibly your photo op of the season coming up. Only maybe one or two more shots at tropical development coming up into October. This could be the winter shot coming up for Salt Life Food Shack. Move you into Monday. Maria moving up towards the Outer Banks. And then Tuesday, here comes the offshore winds. Offshore winds from the South Carolina coast developing on into Florida. Probably side shore, but then on Wednesday, as Maria moves up, offshore winds all the way down into South Florida, through Central Florida, and then northwest winds in here through Georgia, and offshore winds through South Carolina. But guys, look. Look where she is. I know everybody wants to catch surf, and that's why I have a lot of the followers that I have. Move you into Thursday. Move you into Friday. And the Outer Banks could be taking a whip here, guys. Let me back this up to, I guess, middle of Thursday night. 7 o'clock. 
Guys, this is not very far. Dang it, I'm sorry. Give it a second. This is not very far from the Outer Banks in here. Let me put the wind forecast on here. This is winds of 56 knots. 55 knots going into the Outer Banks. This is based on the Euro. Guys, just a little bit more shift to the west can create a lot of trouble for a lot of people. I know there's a lot of people talking about out to sea, but there's also a lot of people that are talking about don't focus on the exact track. That's all we got for you for now. Stay tuned to our social feeds for real-time updates. We're going to try and, and step up again another video update here in the next day or so. Um, if we see something change, we may uh, jump back and, and get another video going. Uh, thanks again for following.